you're watching Into Wine TV, and today we're at Encanto in San Francisco, and we're tasting celebrity wines. Our wine uh, that we're trying now is the 2004 Ernie Els. It's a red blend from Stellenbosch, that's South Africa, and retails for $95. Well, you know, $95 is a, is, is a lot, especially these days, a lot to pay for a wine. Uh, I think the wine's well made. Uh, one of the, the interesting things for me about this wine right off the bat is on the nose I get a lot of roasted coffee and cocoa notes and maybe a little bit of uh, tobacco leaf, which I find very interesting. Uh, now, sometimes wines that are produced like that or that have that note can be a little bit one-dimensional, uh, but I, I think this wine really has a, a balancing alcohol to go with it. I think the tannins are right in line. Um, and you know, it's, it's. I hope. I hope so. I mean, I, I would hope that it, that would be the case at ninety-five dollars a bottle. But I find it enjoyable, and I find it to be a, a fairly, fairly serious wine. You know, I'd agree, and I'd add to that ninety-five dollars. Now you're, you're talking to South Africa. For me to spend ninety-five dollars on a South African wine, you're going to have to. Sh this wine is potentially there. I, I like it. It's got lots of stuffing. It's got lots of things I like, but. I'm only going to pay $95 if I know in 10 years when I pull this out of my cellar, it's going to be the equivalent of a, a nicely aged Bordeaux. And I don't know that yet. And I won't know that, and nobody knows. I don't know, maybe they've been making 10 years, I really don't know, but uh, my guess is... 99. I've, since 99. So, you know, I don't know how they know that. I'm not spending $95, but I'd love to try it in 10 years. If it was 50 or 60, I, I would probably buy a bottle of it and stick it away in the cellar and say, well, let's see what happens. To drink it young, I would, I would decant it for, I'm, I'm a decant, believer in decanting, I would decant it for a long time and, and serve it with uh, food. I think it, it would show nicely at the dinner table. It seems to have all the, the qualities there. I've not had a lot of great South African wines and this is right up at the top of the list, that's for sure. I've actually been to the winery and um, it is one of the most spectacular wineries you'll see anywhere and, and, South, and it's on a hill, it's got the most spectacular views. It's a, ultra modern, tons and tons of money put into it. Obviously he's made a lot of money golfing, and, but I think you know, he's selling his wine for a high price because he's paying for that winery too, but, uh, or he's trading on his name or whatever. Um, it is one of the most respected wines out of South Africa. Um, in South Africa itself, he's one of the res most respected wine winemakers. Um, but we import a wine from South, two wines from South Africa. One is made by Zelma Long, a very famous California winemaker. Uh, she makes a wine called Villa Fonte, and they have a $50 wine and a $70 wine. And we find that the market for that price wine from South Africa, even at $50 and $70, is too high, and we're actually going to reduce the price of those wines a bit. And as whatever you think of this wine, I think that the only way it can sell from South Africa is because of the strength of Ernie Els's name, um, which is naturally very high. Having said that, I think the wine is good. It's very well made, very clearly very well made. It's way too high in alcohol from, from my point of view, but for people who love this type of wine, it's, you know, it's a, a high scorer for sure. Not that the wine's disappointing. I think the wine's well made. I, I really like the wine. Uh, what's disappointing is that not, not enough people are going to get to experience it at $95 a bottle. Yeah. And, you know, at that price, it's, it's, it's difficult know. To, sh you know, to, to, to have that cash layout for a bottle of wine. And the disappointing thing is that it's a well-made wine, and more people should be able, it, should yeah. be a little more accessible. More, more people should be able to, to enjoy this because it's very enjoyable. Also, you think, what, so I was just gonna say, well, you think what you can get for $100 a bottle, and, you know, you can get some... Not maybe not first growth, but you can get certainly classified growths in Bordeaux, and you can get some some of the better traditional Napa cabs or heritage yeah. mer well, blends, and or you could play two holes on Pebble Beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know the people who buying Ernie Els wines are two people: the ones who read reviews and and don't care about the money; they just want a high-scoring wine, or the people who are g golfers um, and golfers have a lot of money generally, uh, especially American golfers, and, and they're not gonna blink an eye at spending $95 to buy something called Ernie Els, which is, you know, they're great fans of golf, they're fans of him, they wanna share it with their friends and talk about it. Uh, so, you know, he can sell it uh, all the more power to him. Um, yeah, sure. Someone who's not particularly excited about golf, but 
you know, I play golf, but um, you wouldn't call it playing golf, but. The ones with the windmills on the hole? And no, I play, actually play golf. I actually get good value out of golf because I get a lot more hits. <laughs> you get a lot more, lot more strokes for your money. Huh? Well, this has been the 2004 Ernie Ells, and we may not be on par here with $95 a bottle, but certainly uh, worth trying if you like something a little bit uh, smokier than, than most. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining.